Today, we celebrate the liturgy of the second Sunday of Easter, called since antiquity Dominica Dominica, hmm? Dominica in Albis. We end our celebration today with the singing of the Regina Celi to honor Mary, our Heavenly Mother, during this time of Easter. And this Sunday is also called the Sunday of the Divine Mercy, the Divine Mercy of Jesus, Jesus, our Divine Mercy, our Divine Love. And the Gospel we have just proclaimed is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20. When Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, Sunday, word quickly got out that the Jesus who had been crucified outside the walls of the city was alive. Everyone was so excited. There was joy among all the apostles, all the disciples, all of them, except one, except Thomas. Thomas said to himself and to others, wait a minute, I am a believer. I love Jesus. I know that Jesus promised that he would come back to life. But he said, unless I see him with my own eyes, and unless I feel the nail prints in his hands, unless I touch the scar on his side, then I'm not going to believe. And as we saw in today's Gospel reading, a few days later, the disciples were gathered together in that upper room in Jerusalem when all of the sudden Jesus came walking through the door and he headed straight towards Thomas. Note, he did not go out of his way to show himself to the people who had the most faith to John, who was there next to his cross on Good Friday, to Peter, whom he had chosen as the rock, the leader of the Twelve, or some other apostle or disciple, apostles in this, in this case. No, he went straight over to that one disciple who had the most doubt. And Jesus looked Thomas in the eyes. And said, Thomas, you have questions, you have doubts, and you know, I know this, Thomas, but you know what? That's okay. That's why I've come to you first. Go ahead, feel the nail prints in my hands. Touch the wound, the scar on my side. And I want to assure you, Thomas, that I am a faithful God and I will do what I have promised. This beautiful gospel we have just proclaimed reminds me of something that happened to me, I think now almost 10 years ago, when I was still in Italy, in Milan. I was still involved in school. I had a parent, a lady, tell me how, even though she called herself Catholic, she didn't really believe in God. She wasn't raised in a religious environment. And even though she had decided to send her son to a Catholic school, but she never went to church on Sunday. She never prayed. She really di didn't give God the time of day. But one day, one night, it was immediately after New Year's Day, her 17-year-old son was involved in a very serious car accident. She rushed with her husband to the hospital, so stressed, so worried. And when she arrived, she was told by the medical team over there that their son probably would not make it. And in fact, after a while, the doctors told them that unfortunately their son had died at the age of 17. This lady with her husband drove home and she told me while she was still sitting in the car, 
She literally screamed out at the top of her lungs, God, I hate you. Why, my son? I hate you. Then she told me she heard in her soul, in her heart, in her mind, she heard like a voice, the kindest, the most gentle voice or something she had never heard before. And it said, that was the first time you've ever spoken to me. And I want to tell you how much I love you. She told me, I never really believed in God before. But at that very moment, there was no doubt in my mind that God was real, that God was there next to me, sitting in that car, next to me, next to my husband. And during that worst moment of my life, she told me, I felt a peace that I never felt before. Because I knew that in some way or another, I don't know how, and I don't know why, I was in the presence of God. And I do believe that what that parent, what that lady had experienced that night was the love of God, going beyond her own doubts. That same experience Thomas had 2,000 years ago when he placed his own hand on the sacred wounds, on the sacred scars of Jesus. We all know that God is moved by our faith. That's a fact. But what today's Gospel reading is telling us is that God chases us in our doubts. In those times when we don't understand, when we have so many questions, when we feel alone, when we feel abandoned, when we doubt our own faith, that's when God has a way of showing up and doing something amazing in your life, as he did with Thomas. Today's Gospel reading is reminding us all that no matter what you may be facing, no matter what disappointment you may be struggling with, know today, on this second Sunday of Easter, that God is still there. And he is reaching out his hand of strength and restoration. Why? Because his love goes way beyond my doubts, our doubts. Your doubts don't drive God away. He doesn't write you off and close the door. Because he wants to reveal himself to you as a loving father. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have doubts. It doesn't matter if you have questions. Believe that God looks beyond your doubts. Believe that God really knows what lies in your heart. On the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, you can see the beautiful picture of Jesus there in front of the altar. The church is inviting us to open our heart and receive that divine mercy, that divine love. The church is telling us, let him restore your peace. Let him pour out his abundant love, his abundant mercy, his abundant blessing on every area of your life. Keep looking for him today and he will reveal himself to you just the same way he did to Thomas, showing you his own scars, his own sacred wounds. Amen.